Okay, hi, I am Tom Palmer with Helicon Media Corporation. Uh, with me today is Graham Jenkin, the CEO of Coinless. Thank you so much for joining me. Really appreciate your time. Um, blockchain Thanks, Gaming is on a, th thank you so much, sorry to cut you off there. Um, small delay, but Blockchain Gaming is on a meteoric rise at the moment. It's uh, up, I think about 140% the last time I checked in the last quarter alone. Um, some players are making a full-time living off of playing play to earn games and yet the amount of blockchain games available today is a, is a small fraction of, of what traditional games are available that have been available to us. Um, so Graham, you had mentioned at the beginning of the year that you felt it was one of the fastest growing areas of blockchain growth. I think your term was steam on steroids, which I really liked. Um, tell us more about your thoughts on the progress of this so far uh, and, and what are your predictions for the rest of the year? Yes, yeah, so we, uh, you know, we've spent a little bit of time as Coinless to trying to go out into the marketplace and and find some of the best new emerging protocols, some of the best new teams that are uh, that are in the space. Um, and really, our mission is to try to accelerate the advancement of blockchain technology in general. And we really see gaming as being very central to that. I mean, if you look at the history of the internet, uh, you know, gaming definitely had a, a massive impact on the success of the internet as well. And uh, yeah. we think the same thing is, is going to happen in the, in the context of blockchain. And so, uh, so yeah, we're, we're definitely seeing a lot of teams out in the ecosystem that aren't just focused on building games themselves, yeah. but are really trying to build gaming ecosystems, uh, whether it's uh, the financial aspect, creating just, not just the wallet, but also like marketplaces, uh, creating the infrastructure for other game developers to come in and, and really accelerate the advancement of those specific protocols. And uh, so, Really excited about what's going on in the space, and and we're definitely seeing a lot more teams getting active uh, in in the ecosystem. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. It's crazy how fast it's moving as well. It's sort of like you're watching it happen uh, right before your eyes with this new technology emerging on definitely. a daily basis. Um, and we also saw that the founder of Reddit, uh, Alexis Ohanian, uh, predicts that ninety percent of games would be play to earn in about five years' time. I have my own thoughts on that, but I wondered, uh, would you agree with that statement? Possibly. I mean, I think in a lot of ways games right now are uh, play to earn, but it's not yeah. necessarily in currency that you might be able to trade for, for, uh, for fiat. But, uh, you know, yeah. I think, uh, I think there's, there's, uh, there's definitely something to be said for that. Uh, there's also an aspect of, obviously there's an aspect of escapism with gaming where you do completely exit Absolutely. the real world. And so I don't know if, I don't know if 90% is, is the right number, <laughs> But uh, but it's it's going to be much greater than zero. I could I could definitely say that, and and we're already seeing a lot of the activity right now. Absolutely. I mean, there's about a thousand blockchain games available today compared to you know one million plus traditional video games. I think the the lines between what we call traditional and blockchain are going to become blurred over the coming years. But you're you're quite right. Ninety percent might be a bit ambitious. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so as we've also seen, you know, game tokens have had a huge rise over the past year um, and, and a bit longer than a year as well, but, but more so in the last quarter, it's really taken off. And uh, as more people adopt this new play to earn model, um, should there be certain considerations that game developers should make for their in-game token economy to thrive? Because within the games themselves, they do have to build a whole economy with a system and a currency that is then redeemable in the real world. So that's the main point of it, right? Yeah, I think I think a lot of it really just comes back to uh, what's always worked with games, which is just great UX and something that's very engaging. And, uh, you know, if there's a natural fit for a token in that context, at least in the context of a game, uh, not talking about kind of broader gaming ecosystems, but in the context of the game, uh, I think I think focusing on good UX, just making on ramps very easy for users. You know, I've been I've been trying to encourage one of my kids to play. Uh, couple of different games. And I think a big part of the challenge there, obviously, is that in order to get in and participate, you sure. have to have, uh, you've got to have the wallet that's native to the game of that, that game's ecosystem, uh, whether yeah. it's Ronin or some other wallet. Uh, you've got to trade your way from the fiat world into yeah. an asset that then you can trade for the asset that you can, you can then deploy in the context of that wallet, and then, you know, purchase NFTs to participate in the game. Uh, so there's, there's a, a, a very large set of hurdles for most ordinary humans, let alone kids, right. to, to participate in gaming. And so I think it, the focus for a lot of teams really should be on that, just making those yeah. on-ramps smooth as silk, just making it as easy as playing a, a, a game on your phone right now. Right, of course, um, yeah. And, uh, but we're, we're not quite there yet, but the only way that gaming mm -hmm. in a blockchain context or in any other context is going to work is, is if that on-ramp, if, if that user experience is smooth as silk 
And yeah. uh, so looking forward to seeing that happen over the course of the next. Absolutely. Year. It's yeah, it's such a good point, actually, as well. The, the sort of um, barriers to entry that some of these games create, not through no fault of their own, it's new technology. So there's processes that you have to go through. Um, ultimately, I do believe that these gaming developers are going to streamline that process. It's going to be like turning on your PlayStation one day. You may not even know that you're playing a blockchain game until, <laughs> you know, you get. Yeah, some I think that's what we want to get Exactly. I think that's what we want to get to is to the point where a lot of this stuff is viewed as plumbing that you don't really have to think about the fact that right. it's this is a Solana based game or this is a, an Ethereum L2 based right. game. And we're still in that world of thinking about the tech, thinking about the plumbing, thinking yeah. about the back end. And, sure. uh, you know, I think, we're, but we're right on the cusp, I think, of uh, a lot of these game developers actually being a little bit more focused on optimizing for the user experience uh, and less mm. so the tech. Uh, don't get me wrong, the tech is always really interesting and it's it's fun to dig into that and it's fun to geek out on that. But I, yeah. I think, uh, you know, you can very get he's very easily get lost uh, in that world and, and forget about the fact that these games are meant to be entertaining and engaging. And uh, so, you know, that's that's definitely yeah. a, a challenge for for uh, the gaming industry right now. Certainly, yeah, it's, it's certainly a consideration that needs to be made. I mean, in terms of like simplifying the game's use, giving players confidence and, uh, you know, faith to the platforms and mechanisms, the security of it, uh, payouts, you know, the audits, it's there's so much that goes into these blockchain projects and games uh, and teams. And, and you know, um, a lot of that is being supported by, you know, various companies. I was wondering if you guys had any plans to support game developers in these processes or uh, perhaps, you know, with with the token listing or in-game economies we sure do and uh you know i think we, we obviously with coinlist a lot of our focus is on finding the best new emerging teams helping them build yeah. their communities helping them raise money and uh that's given us the opportunity to work with some awesome teams including flow uh from dapper labs uh near right. protocol uh immutable x pretty recently as well as the solana team uh and so uh, you know, in, in talking with those teams and trying to understand what their needs are and trying to understand what the developers who are trying to build games on those platforms need, uh, that's definitely giving us plenty of fuel to the fire of uh, right. developing new features, new product. And so, uh, you know, we're, we're obviously, again, big in new token issuance. So that's going to be a focus for us from a gaming standpoint. But, uh, you know, some of the stuff I've already started to talk about on smoothing out the on-ramps into gaming, that's also going to be something that we're going to focus on over the course of the next year. Uh, something else that I think is a is a big challenge for these gaming communities is uh, is around sort of the concept of scholarships and and DAOs offering tokens right. to uh, to new gamers. And right. that's something that's very manual right now. Uh, you know, if you spend any time in in a DAO that is offering. Yep. Um, tokens to potential scholars. Uh, the scholars have to essentially go into go into a, a chat room and, and beg, right? You know, make yeah. their pitch, and it's yeah. a, it's a very mm -hmm. manual process. And um, you know, it's I think that's that process is meant to smooth out the on ramp into gaming. Sure. And that process itself requires all kinds of manual activity and is inefficient and is slow. So sure, so that's something yeah, absolutely. That we're, excited to try to automate to some extent and uh yeah yeah so that's that's a, a really good point actually yeah i mean there's a couple of things that we've been researching quite heavily um you know about how people manage their communities in these discord groups and with these blockchain projects and it's fascinating how you know differently each one of these uh groups is being managed i, I would agree with you going yeah. in there and grinding for a whitelist spot by just you know, chatting over and over again, it's a bit labor intensive. And, you know, most people are using bots to do that kind of thing. But um, it's quite fascinating how people are starting to use these DAOs and, and the plans for the DAOs in the future. At the end of the day, everybody's a stakeholder with your project. So they all have a voice. And I just love that concept, you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, totally. just lastly, before, you know, I really appreciate your, your insight on all of this. But lastly, we're, uh, one of the projects we're involved in is Helicon NFT. Um, and we aggregate games onto the blockchain We're working with them. In doing so, we would work with these game developers to create their in-game economies and tokens. I was wondering if you had any advice about how or what the best way would be to get those tokens listed with CoinList. Who's the best person to talk to? Um, you know, do you have sort of dedicated managers that uh, people could reach out for? Uh, just, uh, yeah, let us know. Yeah, sure. Uh, Andrew Ferrero is uh, is leading some of our efforts there right now. And there's, there's definitely a pipeline of game developers and uh, you know, sure. game <laughs> protocol teams that, that we're talking with. And, you know, we, 
we try to run that process almost like it's a uh, you know seed fund or a venture fund so sure, that makes of evaluating teams and doing doing kind of the the diligence work the background checks all of that stuff uh you know we want to yeah. make sure that the teams that we're working with are legit and uh, cool. they're high quality and so uh which you know it's is not always the case in crypto amazingly enough i know so, yeah i wouldn't um, be surprised <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think, uh, and, and that's a big part of our brand as well, is that we very much focus on working with high quality teams and uh, doing the kind of diligence that you would expect a venture firm to do, but then offering those right. opportunities to our community. So, um, yeah, it's a pretty straightforward process though. And uh, Andrew yeah. Ferrero is is the the guy to connect with, or you can you can reach out to me. Yeah, well, no, that's great. And I really appreciate that insight, actually. I think as these games roll out, these different versions of these currencies and how they're used within the games and externally, uh, it's going to be really fascinating. So it's honestly, it's great and really refreshing to see someone like yourself with this point of view. Uh, we absolutely will be in touch with everything that we're doing. I think, as awesome. you said, this sort of onboarding process when it comes to game developers creating economies, they'll need they'll need a platform like yourselves, uh, like CoinList, in order to launch that properly and, of course, develop over time and how to improve. So, uh, yeah, like I said, it's really refreshing to see you uh, from that standpoint. And, uh, you know, I really thank you for your time here today. I can't really I can't wait to have this conversation again. Tom, great to chat with you. Great to meet you. Thank you so much for your time. Well, uh, we really look forward to speaking again in the future. I'm sure there'll be new updates in, in a couple of weeks time that we'll have to speak about, um, but all the best. Yeah. And uh, yeah, thanks again, thanks again for your time. Yeah, yeah, no sweat. Yeah, keep in touch. Thanks, have a great day. All right, Thank man. you. You too. Take care. Bye. Bye. -bye.